Holy cow, what we just witnessed uh, in this game four in Nashville, Panger. I'm just going to give it right to you because put this in perspective, what just happened with the Nashville Predators leading this game, seconds away from closing it out and taking a 2-2 series, you know, making it 2-2 versus now 3-1 Vancouver's favor. I mean, the whole the whole momentum has shifted for Vancouver. It has. And if that's not hockey, I don't know what is. Yeah. Like nothing's perfect. You know, you throw everything in a briefcase and think it's going to come out <laughs> looking one way and then that happens. You, all the analytics, all the numbers, all the all the stuff that everybody talk, throw it out the window. This yeah. this was an empty net goal on the backhand. Colton says he plays hard. He, he's he's not going to be able to sleep. I feel feel awful for the guy. And it's not the difference in the game. You should be able to defend. I think you should be able to defend a mm -hmm. two goal lead. Uh, but but that was game over. Then the fans were like, Whomp. yep. The fans were on their feet for there was a ninety second break, two ninety second breaks. They never left their yeah. feet. The energy was unbelievable here in Nashville. And then Catherine. The six on five yep. execution by a team that was going nowhere fast in this game. I think at one point during the game, I, I said, it looks like they're going skating uphill against the wind with dull skates. <laughs> and, and it's a phrase I, I used a long time ago. And I'm like, yeah, that's 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 them. Like they can't even get through the neutral zone. Right. Right. They, they get nothing except for the, the JT Miller line. Mm -hmm. And Hughes looks like he's beat up. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and. uh that he comes and makes a great play on the game time goal uh, at three three. I, it, this is this was an amazing night. This will go down, you know, in history as as, as one of the all time great wins from a really poor performance. Right. Interesting because the opposite happened for Nashville in game three. They had a great performance come up on the losing side. We talked to Jason Zucker before the game. He said it was so bittersweet, but we know we got the win. And you felt this entire game that they had the win. You know, they came out. You just felt it the whole time, and the whole thing blew up in their face at the end. You've got a number three goaltender with Vancouver, a relative unknown. So I thought we would have seen Nashville maybe attack him a little bit more from the beginning, like just really pepper him. You know, we didn't really see that. I agree with you. But you know, that's a whole other storyline to this game. It's like they played for this guy. That, that is true. They did. De it's funny that they they defended better than they did for Casey DeSmith in, in game right. in game three. Um, they so did they go with she loves in game four? I mean, we don't know what's going on with DeSmith, and that's a whole other mystery. He was yeah. a he was available to be the emergency backup goalie, but not available to start the game. What a day is, this was today. Yeah, right? it was very we didn't let's, wake up thinking this is what was gonna happen. Let's recap Nashville. <laughs> okay. Had an off day yesterday. Um, I went golfing, shockingly <laughs> enough. And then and and then we met for dinner, watched some hockey, yep, had a glass of wine, yep, and then um came here today at four o'clock start. That was a little bit odd. And then we get the news of DeSmith. And then we and then we watch in the game. And I mean, Roman Yossi nearly lost an ear. Uh, Tyler Myers nearly lost a nose yep. with shots uh, off off sticks that 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 hit them. And then uh Quinn Hughes was getting Quinn completely Hughes was, banged up. Like, I mean, Ryan McDonough was playing Ryan, Ryan McDonough's McDonough's playing with a the, left the, shoulder the injury. Arm, shoulder going on. And then and then just things started happening. Second period wasn't very good, and uh, but it's a three-one lead. And, and then the goal 12 seconds into the third period. Mm -hmm. By Forsberg, mm -hmm. it was kind of like, what just happened here? Right. And, and why isn't Vancouver ready to battle here? They're right in this hockey game. And uh, and then, okay, I'm going to take it a step further. Then the then the last commercial break where Derek McKenzie, the assistant coach of, of uh, Nashville, has got that team. Did you see that? I did. That yeah, there? I did. And uh, Catherine's all over the place. She's kind of roaming. <laughs> is what well, I was is, in so. the hallway with seconds to go, thinking I'm doing a post-game interview with Roman Yossi, and that obviously changed very quickly when yeah. Brock Besser scored the time. It would have goal. been interesting if you did a post-game interview with Roman Yossi. I know. <laughs> no. I mean, because I, you wonder what their thoughts were like, For sure. especially after, but anyway, I'll go back to this. So Derek yeah. McKenzie spends the entire 90 seconds, almost to the second where finally Chris Lee, the referee says, guys, face off. You got it. You got it going. And I'm looking over at Vancouver and they look like they had no interest in the world. They were kind of like, Oh my goodness. Like there was just nothing. And, and I'm thinking at that point, Okay, there's four minutes to go. This this is done. Yeah, you know, and then, uh, boy, oh, oh my goodness, wild. I know we still can't get over. But execution it. to pull the goalie. Not every team can do that. Mm -hmm. you, you know what Vancouver did tells you how well prepared they are as players, but and the coaching staff is. They were all set plays. Mm -hmm. They've got so many set plays off faceoffs, um, and they scored the first goal of the game off a set play off the faceoff. And then they and then they turn that around. They get the goalie out on a mm -hmm. clean, like a really great. 
Hughes has got it in his own zone as he's carrying the puck up the ice. Here comes the goalie with them. Yeah. That's the way you pull the goalie. Yeah. And then you get fresh bodies on the ice. The tired guys came off, fresh guys on. Now you got all your elite players are ready to go. Yep. And boy, did they make it yeah. look easy. They certainly that was did. A clinic. It was. And now you look ahead to, you know, game five in Vancouver. They're going to fly all the way across country. Nashville leaves early tomorrow morning to go. Vancouver will get out tonight. This is a whole nother ball game now. On home ice, they've got a chance to close out this series now. It, it, yes. I mean, the pressure was totally on them going yep. back there at 2-2 and only getting 12 shots in game three. Yep. And I don't know, it would have been 18 shots yeah, probably in this game. That. I mean, they, there was nothing. They were, I, I, I love Bruce Springsteen lyrics, but they were waist deep in a big muddy. <laughs> it's a good song, but that's what they were. And then, and that's turned to this. Yep. But in saying that, there's still a ton of adjustments that Vancouver's got. Yep. You're, you're not going to win the game. You're not going to do this again. Uh, I don't think so. Like you're not going to, you're not going to end up saying, okay, well, we'll, we'll get very little going on and we'll have a lot of players that are passengers not playing really mm -hmm. well. And then, and we're going to come back and win the game. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, I think Nashville has played better and they certainly deserve to win this game, but they shot themselves mm -hmm. in the foot and they lose the game. Now, was it their play or was it the great play? Was it the empty net goal? Yes, it was. That would have been four, one game over. Thanks for coming. Yep. But I still think that Nashville has an opportunity in this series. Well, we you mentioned it. The, the line for Vancouver that was outstanding and has been is that JT Miller line. But one thing you said during the broadcast and you questioned Brendan Burke, you said, you know who I haven't seen or who they, who they could use in this lineup? Elias Pettersson. Yeah. How do you get him going? Yeah. He's the, He would be a difference maker in this, in this series if he could just do what he's supposed to do and what he's paid $92 million to do. Yeah. That starts next year. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Maybe. <laughs> Pressure's on next year. Um, well, it, it, the game's fast. The, his foot speed mm -hmm. doesn't seem to be able to catch up with the play. They want to play a fast game. Rick Tockett wants the D to get the puck up the ice. They want to go North and they want to go North in a hurry. And I, I, I do believe that he likes to play an East-West game. Mm. He doesn't have the foot speed or the power in his legs to go north like JT Miller does. Yep. Um, JT. Brock Best is not the fastest skater, but he's a powerful skater. Mm -hmm. He can still fend off players. But but I don't think that that Pedersen can. Mm -hmm. And I think all the stuff that he's done in the past in the regular season that's worked out, that's this different game. Yeah. You get time and space. Somebody gets their stick on it. It's a penalty. You know, he's great on the power play or, or good on the power play. The power play is kind of, instead of going through him on one side, it does go through JT Miller on the other side of the ice. So maybe there's some frustration that he's not getting enough touches on that side. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is the power play works when it goes through JT Miller. Yeah. So these are all tough things. And, you know, it doesn't take much to change not only people's opinions of you, yeah. your teammates' opinions of you, your coaches' opinions of you, and your own opinion of yourself by doing something abnormal. Mm -hmm. That's what I would like to see him do. Okay. It could be a, it could be a, a block shot. It could be a, you know, he's not going to overwhelm anybody with a hit, mm -hmm. but, and it, and I'm not necessarily thinking just scoring goals. That's not everything in the game of hockey, but it could be a great play off the boards to make a play, to take a hit or take it to make a play. And, and then, you know, and then start from there. Yeah. And it's at, at home. I think he could do himself a favor by being a, a good defender, do something different where the yeah. crowd goes, Whoa. Yeah. You know, and then you get, get yourself some into down. it and yeah. then get your team into it. Yeah, so. exactly. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, things are a little bit different than I thought our conversation would be towards the end of the third period, Panger. But here we are. Round? This is hockey. Yeah. This is playoff hockey. Uh, wow. Just an amazing game. And give credit to Vancouver. They found a way to win it. They go back and they got a chance to close out the series on Tuesday. Did so. you interview Brock Besser after the game? I did. Yeah. He's a good hockey player. He's a, yeah, he's a pretty well, darn good hockey the, player. Yeah. Should I relay what I, during the game, what I, because yeah, I'm between the benches sure. here on, and, and, and there's, there's just a lot of stuff going back and forth and, and, uh, and I'm, I'll say something that no one in the game of hockey that that is a player um, would question this. Uh, Kiefer Sherwood, he talks a lot of the bench. <laughs> he's got a he's got he a motor the pot. and he just keeps going. And sometimes he's just he's just yelling at somebody, and I don't even know who he's yelling at. It's just it's just kind of one of those things he's trying to get under the skin of of somebody. Usually it's Zadorov, Dak Joshua. Yeah. Anyway. So he's going on and on and on. And and Brock Besser is to my left, and he's kind of. Brock, as you know, is a pretty cool customer, right? Like he's I, very I, even I mean, keel. Yeah. Like, he's a very sweet even heart of a guy. And, and he's just kind of looking like this and he kind of just is trying to figure out who, who uh, Kiefer's yelling at. And then Kiefer notices that he's looking at him. <laughs> so now he says something to Brock. Now, now he's turned his attention to, to Brock Besser and he <laughs> says something I can't repeat, but, but he's just saying things, you know, it's nothing, it's not a personal thing. So don't yeah. get that. It's just, it's just names and words and bad words. So I'm not going to say it. And, <laughs> And Brock Besser goes, 
I'm good at hockey. <laughs> But I'm good at hockey. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm good at hockey. That he is a hat trick. Unbelievable. Oh, what a game for Brock Besser. I yeah. told, yeah, I spoke to him before the game off camera, got a little, some good stuff coming into this game. I said to him, I said, oh, nice to see you again. <laughs> you know, nice. little did we know at the beginning of the day, what big night he would have. So we will see what game five brings us uh, back to Vancouver. We won't be there. We might be back here for game six. We don't know. It's playoff hockey. We get told, what, 24 hours in advance. So we'll see where we go. Uh, it's been fun being here, though, in Nashville. Great series. And, um, yeah. Great job. Away we go. Good job, KT. <laughs>